how to get an A star in A level physics. So I did my A level physics last year and I got an A star for it. And this is basically how I did it. For your information, I also did the A levels in a year because my college had a 12 month course. And I also did the Cambridge International A levels. But I think that tips are generally applicable to most exam boards. So let's start with the general strategy, the biggest strategy of all, which is just how I plan for my exams and how I organize the months before the exam. The first phase that I have to call the learning phase is when I put understanding before memorizing at all cost. And this is especially true for physics is that when you really deeply understand a concept, you're pretty much halfway there. It's really easy to look back onto something that you've already understood before, even if you have forgotten it a little bit. And I think that it's better to not waste time memorizing everything and then moving on to the next chapter because there is a lot to memorize in physics and if you do every little thing in the textbook you're going to end up using a lot of time on learning and less time on preparing for the exam like doing past papers so when i was learning the concepts all i did was just read through it understand it and then move on i made notes that i shared on this channel and explained um, and other than that, I didn't actually go out of my way to memorize them, like use flashcards from the get-go. And I think that's just a much more time-efficient strategy. So I would leave like two months, one to two months before the exams to just learn. And then the rest of the one to two months before the exams, I would be focusing it on past papers, which is the second phase. And this is the past paper phase. So obviously, because I hadn't memorized every single fact and every single formula, I had to refer to my notes or my textbook um, at first, because there were a lot of things that were required in the exams that I didn't automatically have ready to use in my brain. So I referred to the notes and my textbook for the first three to four past papers. Eventually, I got to the point where I thought, okay, I can solve the past papers without the notes um, to a relatively okay standard. And it wasn't perfect, but it was to a point where I thought I could have passed. Um, so I was like getting over 60% and I didn't really need the notes anymore. And I kind of challenged myself. And so what I did is I memorized the content with reference to the past papers rather than with reference to the textbook because I think that it's just streamlining the amount of information that you have to work with and that is obviously much more efficient. Then we could actually begin with memorization. So as I said, I just memorized the things that I needed to memorize when I looked at what I was lacking in the past paper department. I memorized model answers and commonly used formulas that you can't derive in the exam or isn't actually given in the formula sheet. So make sure to check the formula sheet and think for a moment if you can actually logically derive an equation by itself. Because there are a plethora of equations in physics that are just derivations from other equations that you already know. And it, they're pretty much no-brainers. And you don't have to spend that much time memorizing every single equation. So differentiating that is going to help you a lot. And I used flashcards to memorize definitions and formulas. And the next part is using wrong answer notes. So once you have memorization down, once you have some sort of familiarization with the past papers, you can start making wrong answer notes. I made notes of things that I got wrong. For instance, the difficult questions where I was like, Eureka, when I got it right, or very wordy questions um, where I didn't memorize all of the keywords that I needed, or maybe even facts that I forgot and they were easy to forget that I had to include. I made notes for all of these and I kind of compiled it into one notebook in which I had all of my mistakes. I also made a point of putting down the very common questions so that they would help me save time in the future if I actually faced a question like that in an exam. So these wrong answer notes were kind of my holy grail for physics. I was looking at this like the day before exams, the hour before exams. And I think they helped me a whole lot. So lastly, there is the question of how many past papers did I do? And I did two to three years of past papers for almost every single subject that I did. And one year has seven papers in it. So that means that I did around 15 to 20 papers. So it's not 
a crazy lot. It's definitely enough for me to get familiar with everything. I don't think you have to do too many past papers in order to get an A star, but I think you have to learn something meaningful from every paper, hence the wrong answer notes that I used. So now let's talk about the AS level. For the practical paper, there is a certain part 1 and part 2, and the structures of part 1 and part 2 are actually identical across all practical papers. The only thing that differs is the type of experiment that comes up. So I think it's a good idea to organize information separately for question 1 and question 2. For question 1, I would be thinking about the uncertainties that I have to remember, the type of graph that they want me to do. For question 2, I'd be thinking about examples of inaccuracies and how to correct them. And a very common inaccuracy is just do the experiment more than one time and, you know, decrease the amount of inaccuracies. And you should probably memorize a couple of those. So, as I said, organize information separately. And I also think that it's a good idea to study the uncertainties because I think you can derive a lot of things just purely logically in the practical papers, but you can't derive uncertainties and the rules of uncertainties. So you should memorize them. It comes up again in your A2 levels as well. And study the mark scheme. Now for the MCQ or the subjective paper, I think that there's a lot of content that's really similar to IGCSE, and that could also be O-levels if you've done it. So I think it's a good idea to skip over the ones that you've learned before and just note the ones that are new to you. And you shouldn't spend too much time on revising your IGCSE content. You should just skip over it and try it out in the papers, in the past papers, to see if you still have it in your head. And I think the best thing to do for these papers is to make use of the wrong answer notes that I mentioned previously. And especially for questions like the MCQ paper, if you just solve more and make more wrong answer notes and revise the wrong answer notes, eventually you spot a lot of questions that are similar to each other and they all become no-brainers and they become super easy to do. So now I'm going to talk about the A2 level. For the A2 level, for the practical paper, it's just like the one in the AS level. There is a very predetermined structure of question one and question two. For the question one, where you have to plan an experiment, the experiment planning is 15 marks and you just have to write everything. The best thing to do is to read the mark scheme in a very detailed manner and memorize how many marks are given for each type of answer. For instance, there are six extra marks for additional points, like safety precautions or how you can create higher accuracies within the experiment. There is also a mark given for like noting out what is the variables, what are the manipulated and the constant variables, for instance. You should read it through and memorize all of the marks and the allocation of the marks. For instance, for the six extra marks for additional points, now that you know that there, there is a maximum of six month marks that you can get for this, you should always aim for seven to eight points in the actual paper in order to fill out your six marks. So even if you get one or two wrong, you would still get your full mark. So for the subjective paper, which is the one with the long answers, because there's a lot more content in A2, it is important to understand before memorize. Just understand and then memorize with reference to the past papers. You should more do more past papers and make more notes because there are a lot of similar question types. And you should also make a list of the formulas you need to remember. As you do the past papers, you will rem realize, oh, I don't know this formula. Then add it to your list. So there's quite a lot of formulas and definitions that you have to memorize. I used flashcards for this and that made it a lot easier for me. And you should also memorize the mark scheme for certain wordy and common questions like ultrasound functions or how to show that a graph has a, an object in simple harmonic motion. So these types of wordy questions are very common and it's worth just memorizing them by heart with reference to the mark scheme. So again, my best tip here is memorize the content with reference to the past papers, not with reference to the entire textbook. So I think that's about it for my tips for A-level physics. I really hope whoever is watching this can do well in their exams. I had a pretty good time learning the content because I think it's pretty interesting. 
and I hope that you can experience that too. Thank you for watching and do go check out the rest of my channel if you want more summaries on the content of A-Level Physics.